with the University of Arizona? Yeah, so? Good football team. Yeah, I guess so. I don't really know. Arizona Wildcats. Well, it didn't take him long, did it? Rich Rodriguez, of course, at West Virginia, did one heck of a job with the Mountaineers. Michigan, not so much, but in just year number three at the U of A, Rodriguez took the Wildcats to a major bowl. That's right, the Fiesta Bowl. And even though the team finished with a two-game losing streak, still, though, you saw lots of improvement from the Wildcats, in particular on offense. And there's no question that Rodriguez proved us two things. One, that you can make any offense into a successful one if they follow your lead. And number two, Rodriguez can still recruit like crazy. And entering the 2015 season, Rodriguez in year number four at Arizona will have a lot of offensive firepower. That includes a new Solomon. Solomon as a freshman. Boy, how about this? One heck of a job with 28 touchdown passes and almost 3,800 yards through the air. And we mentioned the 28 TDs. How about only nine picks? It will help, too, that he'll return the running back. And that is uh, Nick Wilson. Now, Wilson enters the season as a sophomore. And just like um, Solomon his freshman year, Wilson dominated by rushing for almost 1,400 yards. Remember, he was a freshman a year ago and had senior-type numbers and 16 touchdowns. Arizona averaged about 35 points a game en route to their Pac-12 South Championship. Again, it was one heck of a year in Tucson. Receiving-wise, they're going to be loaded there with uh, Shamaji Grant, but also Caleb Jones. And Jones had a 1,000-yard receiving season with 10-19 receiving and, by the way, nine touchdowns. So that's production. The offensive line, and this is going to be a drawback and a challenge entering 2015 for the Wildcats, three down linemen have to be replaced. But both guards do return, one of them being Cayman Bundage, and they will be getting a transfer from Cal to play the left tackle position. So there are some questions being answered, but again, it's going to be a mystery to see what Arizona will do and if they can duplicate or even better their numbers for a year ago. If you're looking at from skilled players, absolutely. If you're looking at it as a whole, hard to say because, again, they will have a lot of players on that line, on that interior in particular, to replace. Defensively, Arizona, yeah, last season we saw them falter at the end of the year. They gave up a ton of points against Oregon and a lot of points against Boise State in the Fiesta Bowl. The last two games alone, the U of A gave up nearly 90 points. Look, I know that Arizona is a team that doesn't take much time of possession off the clock. Okay, When it comes to offense, they're a team that, uh, simply put, is going to make their defense play more than the offense. It's because of Arizona's fast style. But still, though, one thing Rodriguez really wants to stress defensively, can they go too deep at every position? Because, let's face it, that's really the only way they're going to be national championship contenders is if their defense has plenty of depth. The problem with Arizona, again, defensively, it's kind of like Texas Tech in the Big 12. Their defense plays more than their offense, and it takes more energy to play defense, and it takes more brain work because defensively you're reacting to the play. Offense, you already know what you're going to do, but defensively you're guessing where the play is going to go, and you have to fight off blocks and, of course, finish the play. So defensively, Arizona knows that the big challenge awaits them, especially the way that they finished 20-14 and 14, despite the 10-4 and 4 successful year. Six starters have to be replaced. The secondary, remember, this is an Arizona team that plays a 3-3-5 alignment, and the only true starter you have back is the guy that plays the spur position, that's uh, Will Parks. But what will help Arizona is the former five-star recruit out of Notre Dame, Devontae Neal. We'll get to see what he does um, at a defensive back position. And also you have um, Jarvis McCall. You'll have him at a corner. So um, this will be a team that, let, let's face it, we know that they're not just going to stop everybody because of the fact that as a whole they're challenged. But the one thing that they've got to do, though, is – able to force field goals, okay? Make sure that when teams drive inside the 20, it's not always six points. And toward the end of last season, their defense was showing maybe some issues with stamina. One guy that never has an issue with stamina is the Lombardi Award winner, arguably the best linebacker in college football. That is Scooby Wright. And Scooby, yeah, he can definitely boogie. As Scooby last season, 163 tackles and 14 sacks and forced six fumbles. No wonder he was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Linebacker, no question, is the strongest area because not only is your best player um, on the team a linebacker, but also you return more experience at linebacker with Derek Turituri. So Turituri and Wright will be the anchors of that defense. And on the line, 
Reggie Gilbert, this was good news for Arizona, getting a fifth year of eligibility. But, as we mentioned earlier in the show, Arizona will have to show that not only can they go too deep on defense, but they have to show that they can hold the opposition to three or less more times than we saw this past year. Offensively, by the way, this is something that Arizona really needs to work on, speaking of the red zone. They drove inside their opponents 20, 60 times, but only got touchdowns, 33 of them. That's 55%. And that won't cut it if they want to make a run in a college football playoff. Special teams, they do look solid in this area. They returned the punter. That's uh, Drew uh, Riggleman, the punter, averaged uh, 46 yards per boot. And Casey Showrun, you got him back 20 of 28 field goals. He was bottled in that win last year at the gun against Washington. The schedule has good and bad on it for Arizona. We'll begin with the good. Uh, first three games, hey, if this is a team that's going to have another double-digit winning year, uh, you know, beating, um, you know, the likes of Texas San Antonio, who was a challenge last year, but this time you get them at home, winning at Nevada, who can play, and beating Northern Arizona should not be that big of a challenge for the Wildcats. They should be 3-0 entering the conference opener, which is at home against UCLA. We mentioned that Arizona averaged 35 points per game a year ago, but UCLA was the one team that figured – uh, the Wildcats out in that game at the Rose Bowl. All the Wildcats could muster was seven points. But you get them at home this time. And there's no Oregon on the schedule, which will help. That's the team that slaughtered Arizona last year in the Pac-12 championship game. And uh, there's a mid part of the schedule that should be fairly manageable um, games against, I think, um, Washington State, Oregon State, and at Colorado, sandwich in between. Those are three games that should be in the handy department for Zona. Bad part about the schedule is the fact that of your last four games, all four games that Arizona could lose, really, um, and three of them were on the road. At Washington, at USC, another team that beat Arizona a year ago, and that could have serious Pac-12 South ramifications, hosting Utah, and you wrap up against your hated rivals from Tempe, Arizona State, in the finale. But to me, that's not the worst part of the schedule. Worst part is that there is no bye week in between any of the games. In fact, the only time the bye week, the official bye week, which is the final week of November, is going to help is if Arizona goes to the Pac-12 championship game where they would get that bye week as an extra week of rest. Otherwise, it does them no good. And I think just about everybody else in the Pac-12 has a bye week in between a game, not after the season is over. Arizona did not get a favorable draw in that regard. A favorable draw not playing the Ducks. But the other parts of the schedule, you could see where maybe it was payback. Look, my final thoughts on Arizona, offensively, they're going to be fun to watch. And, again, I expect um, there to be good numbers. Whether or not they can duplicate last year's numbers is beyond anybody's imagination because, again, the offensive line has to be retooled. Defensively, you've got Scooby Wright, but you need more players like Scooby Wright. They don't have enough of those players, and they don't have enough depth on this on this defensive unit. And I, I see the end of the year where that bye week is not there being a factor. And again, Arizona, as good as they were last year, did not finish strong. I think the same thing will happen. I got 8-4 and four for the uh, Wildcats, and I have them going 5-4 uh, and four, uh, with a fourth-place finish in league play. That's my look at the uh, U of A, Arizona. We'll catch you next time, everybody.